Good evening and welcome. It's Friday and it's eight o'clock and that means it's time for Buster's Virtual Jazz Club. We are now live on YouTube uh, to the world, to infinity and beyond. I hope you've had a good week and um, uh, let us know if you're out there. If there's anyone watching, do drop a comment in the box. Or maybe you're all watching the uh, election results at the moment. But uh, <laughs> we'll uh, we'll keep you updated if we get anything coming while we're on air. Um, so, uh, yes, uh, welcome everybody. And uh, once again, a big thank you to all my Patreon subscribers who support me every week on every show with a, with their subscription. More, more about that later. Uh, but my guest this evening, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm very pleased to have on the show, um, was born in Hexham, Northumberland, and he began his career playing guitar for rhythm and blues bands in the Newcastle area. And in 1967, he moved to Leeds and gained a diploma in jazz studies from Leeds College of Music. In 1971, he moved to London and quickly became established on the local scene. During the 70s, he toured Holland, Denmark, Italy and the UK with the Lee Konitz Warren Marsh Quintet and also toured with the group Soprano Summit featuring Kenny Devon and Bob Wilbur. He worked increasingly as a freelance musician from the 1980s onwards, producing the first of several albums under his own name featuring Jeff Simpkins on alto saxophone. He has appeared many times at Ronnie Scott's Jazz Club in groups led by various artists including Georgie Fame, Mike Carr, Irene Reed, Dick Pierce and Bruce Adams. He has also worked extensively with visiting American jazz musicians including Slide Hampton, Nina Simone, George Masso, Spike Robinson, Herb Geller, Harry Allen, Jack McDuff, Eddie Lockjaw Davis, Richie Cole, Ken Poplowski and many more. In 1998, he won the BT Jazz Awards for Best Guitarist. He has long been committed to jazz education and the teachings of Lenny Tristano, which he studied under Peter Ind. And for many years, he has been professor of jazz guitar at the Trinity Laban Conservatoire of Music, the Royal Welsh College of Music and Drama, and the Birmingham Conservatoire of Music, as well as tutoring on the original UK Jazz Summer School. And on top of all that, he also has the great distinction of being the guitarist on my theme tune, which is the title track for from an album called Back For More that we recorded together under the leadership of the great saxophonist Joe Fuchs. And I'm pleased to say he's here with us now, live on YouTube. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the very wonderful Mr. Dave Cliff. Hello, mate. How are you doing? Howdy, folks. I'm absolutely <laughs> Thanks for coming on the show, Dave. It's it's lovely to have you here. Thanks for uh, sharing your time and your music with us. I'm really looking forward to this. How, how have you been keeping? How's things? Not bad. Good. Not great, but not bad. Okay, all right, great. Um, <laughs> we've got okay, we'll, we'll sell for okay. Okay, all right, okay, good. Um, and I'm pleased to say we have got some people on the chat box there, so good evening and welcome. Steve, Sarah, Peter, Real Sonic, Dave and Simon. Simon Thorpe checking in. Lovely to see you there, oh. mate. Hello and welcome. Um, so... Yeah, we've got we've got a lot of stuff to talk about, um, and um, you know, I thought I thought what we'd do is we'd start off with a video. We've we've managed to track down some great videos, some great footage we found on YouTube of you touring um, and playing on some some. Uh, we've got some German TV channels, some an Irish TV show, and um, and a couple of live gigs as well, haven't we? So so. There's some great stuff on YouTube there, plus some audio tracks as well. The, f um, the first thing I thought we'd play, Dave, if that's all right with you, yeah. is we've got a video here. And this is, um, this is from 1996, live in Bern at the Jazz Festival there with uh, Bob Wilbur and the New Generation Jazz Band and um, a very fine trumpet player, Byron Stripling. And uh, that was that was in the sort of, uh, as I said, ninety six. Do you, do you, do you want to tell us anything about that, or do you, should we just have a little listen? Got any? No, got any... Weeks work in uh, Bern. Yeah, uh, we played at the local club and then did that one concert. So and, this was, uh, this was for the festival, wasn't it? Was it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's part of the Bern festival. Yeah. And they filmed it for 
TV show in in uh, German TV yeah. channel. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and that went. And did it go out live, or was it recorded at live of the gig and then I put think, out? I think later? it was recorded. Yeah, yeah. So, it's, but it's in front of a live audience, isn't it? As part of the yeah. festival, it's a proper yeah, gig. Yeah. Okay, well, look, let's watch a bit of that. And this is um, so this features um, Byron Stripling on the trumpet and Bob Wilbur on the clarinet. And this is a track called uh, Benny's Bugle. Benny's Bugle. Benny's Benny Bugle, Go yeah. Go ahead. Benny referring to Benny Goodman. Benny Goodman, is that the it's referring to? Well, you know, Charlie Christian played a lot with Benny Goodman. The, right. The, the co wrote things. Right. No, Charlie Christian wrote it and Benny Goodman claimed the credit. <laughs> Fantastic! Oh, right. Yeah, right. yeah. It's good to see that's that's still going strong. Then that sort of behaviour. Yes. All right. Then let's let's watch. Well, we're going to watch a bit of this, and there's some very yeah. interesting uh, TV graphics here at the beginning as well. So I think um, it says Stefan Grappelli was on the bill with you as well. Is that right? Yes, or, he was. Yeah. On the same night or on a different yeah. night? No, he's on the same night. He played before us. Who was on this? Who was doing guitar with him then? Was it John? I can't remember. John Etheridge, no. It wasn't John or Martin Taylor. It was a Dutch guy, I think. All right. I think All right. Gibbs. Okay, brilliant. Let's check this out then. Um, live in Bern, 1996. <laughs> Thank you. 
Wonderful, and that was uh, that featured my guest Dave Cliff on guitar, playing an absolutely storming solo there, Dave, and a very swinging band. We were just talking. Do you remember yeah. the, the the names of the chaps in the band? Because I, I'm not aware of all those musicians. Yeah, so I don't Joel, Joel actually only on drums. Right. Who was sadly not playing anymore. He had multiple sclerosis. Oh. And a, a <laughs> lovely tenor uh, piano. We had a piano solo there. Um, Mark Shane on piano. Mark Shane and a, and a, a nice tenor solo as well. Antti Sapila from Finland. He's a student of Bob's. Right, yeah, and you and you were saying that apparently Bob Wilbur studied um, with Sidney Bechet. Yes, on that's the right, yeah. sopra, um, soprano sax, which which we're going to yeah. see a bit him playing. It. He's on the clarinet there, obviously, but um, he's going to play the soprano a bit later. And there's a couple of um, nice comments there. Uh, Simon Thorpe says uh, that's why Matt Skelton and I called Dave the Governor. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, nice. <laughs> I think it's talking about how much you swing, and and it really did. That was fantastic. Um, and uh, just, I mean, without getting too technical about strings and things, I, I couldn't help notice you playing because a different type of guitar there. Because you you often play something else now, don't you? But do you remember what that was? That's like a regular. That's like a sort of thing you normally. I think I was playing the the the, the chuck, chuck Takamini, right? Yeah, that looks like the sort of thing I'd normally see on a jazz guitar. Is that or an arch top, isn't it? I think they is a, is a yeah, fairly standard. Yeah, but you yeah. you don't usually play that, do you? You normally play a solid body guitar. Um, well, it's fifty fifty. Oh, I mean, right. Japan, it, I mean, when you're working in a situation like that where you're playing music of the forties, like I right. uh, do rhythm guitar and so a lot of rhythm guitar, that doesn't suit with a solid body. No, right. Not quite the right feel or sound. So what? I mean, do you... Sorry. It's not impossible, but um, yeah, there's certain advantages. Like one of the advantages of a solid body guitar, it cuts through when you've got a loud, loud band. Yeah, because there's a... organ and bass guitars and electric keyboards and amplified drums. Right. Um, the, the solid body it cuts through it throughout the whole range. Right. Whereas on the guitar, on the Takamini, in the middle range, there, it sometimes gets muffled. It's like a muffled sound, you know. Interesting. Being open clear cuts through Joe Pass's early records were made on solid body guitar I didn't Fender, know that Fender, the Fender yeah hmm. well he's in the drugs rehabilitation place so the only sounds are sitting on don't know it was a record made by jazz musicians so in this rehabilitation in Joe Pass and the Fender music company supplied all the equipment oh wow. so he's playing a Fender but he, he didn't yeah. stick with that he's, he, he went back to his yeah, yeah. Yeah, went back to Gibson. And of course, those um, those arch tops and things they're they're notoriously difficult of feeding back, aren't they? I think when they turn up as well. Am I right? That's, that's true. That, that's right. Yeah. So if you're in an organ or something and you need a bit of um, five C, yeah, that makes yeah. a lot of sense now. Yeah. And the sound though, your sound is very distinctive as well. It's a very clean sound on the on on that solid. But is that something, or is it you, 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 you know, is there a lot? Of well, I don't pitch? know. I like to think it's, it's more you approach you can impose your sound on the guitar. Right. The guitar. Or is it one you? Right, yeah. Um, so, so yeah, people have said that you should recognise my sound. Definitely, yeah, That's very it. distinctive. Yeah, I've always thought that. Um, great, okay, well, look, um, but we, we've we got another clip, but before, maybe we should talk a little bit more about um, how, you, how you got started, because um, we know you came down to, and studied at Leeds, and at the yeah. same time, you're also studying with... Peter in was that was that well, part was, of the know, college? Uh, yeah. Him and Bernie Cash, another bass player, they were running the course. Right, they had, to, they had a bit of a falling out with the management. Oh, aye, right, right. Uh, so they, they left. And, Dick, and Dickie Hall, trumpet player, took over the course. Right, and Peter in for yeah. those that don't know, is a um, great British jazz bass player who studied uh, and worked with um, Lenny Tristano, didn't he? And, and he kind of in, yeah. went in in New York. And then came back to London and was very much a sort of, um, you know, a, a sort of a disciple of that kind of approach. Um, and we're, uh, Jeff Simpkins was my guest a few weeks ago. And we were sort of discussing there about the idea of having to learn solos by ear and singing yeah. things like that. And that's something that you're very much um, 
uh, using your teaching as well, I know. Um, and that's something I yes, do. Yes, because of doing things by ear and right. singing things. You should play what you sing and sing what you hear. Yeah. Sing what you play. Very good. The other thing I and what I've always so felt about your guitar style, if you want, if you like, as well, is that um, you know may, maybe you could talk about some of your early influences because sometimes I don't know. Maybe I'm off mark here, but it it, it's, it seems to me like you live, you've probably listened you've would have listened to as horn players as much as guitarists in that. Yes, oh, yeah, very much so. Your playing is very much I hear like really beautiful strong lines. And the other thing is, you you kind of re you breathe. Your phrasing is kind of like a horn player taking a breath every now and again. And that's why I think some sometimes you what what makes you swing so much because sometimes guitar players, you know, like piano, vibraphone, and guitar, because they don't need to breathe. Sometimes they they never leave a, a gap at all. But you've all, you always have these nice yeah. phrases in in your playing. Is that something that you consciously worked on, or do you think it's a sort of natural evolution yeah. of yeah. It's just all part of it. It's just all part of the study of the sound yeah. of what you've been doing. Yeah. I find well, one of my tutors, had, it was Bernie Cash. I was getting a bit stuck on my playing and he recommended singing what you play. Mm. And also years later when I met and played with Lee Konitz, he recommended you just play for and swap fours with yourself. Play four, sing four. Ah. Eight, eight could be eight. Play right. eight and then sing eight. To what, try and link up what you to link up what you really hear and what you really feel. So and play then, the same thing what you're yeah. singing and play it back. So you're not falling. So you're not falling in the patterns. Mm. Yeah, very good. Very and good. Keep it, keep, keep it spontaneous and unpredictable. Well, that's always a good thing. Yes. Well, look. Um, let's just let's, let's. Well, actually, before we do, so I've got a f little surprise here. Your son Mickey's sending me some stuff this afternoon. And I've, it's all right. I've, I've warned you about this, so um, I wouldn't just thrust this upon you. But we've, we've got yeah, your, yeah. we've got your results, your diploma results oh, from, um, from nineteen sixty seven to sixty eight at Leeds College of Music. It's all well, typed. Really <laughs> yeah. Well, you'll be pleased to know that everything says excellent, excellent, excellent. Always makes a good contribution. You don't mind me reading these out, do you? Well, no, you, no. I know I, I already asked you, yeah. Um, but they was quite interesting. They're all. I mean, it's a glowing report, and I think there's some interesting things. things except for think out the bad bits, yeah. That's yeah, right. except for um, classical guitar. Apparently, there's your tutor says here, um, and I quote: "Although Dave has great natural ability." His heart isn't really in classical guitar playing, hence the low mark. I think he will do well in his chosen field. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously, that was, that's, that's proved to be very true. But overall, your tutor says, an extremely promising musician, inordinate talent, an extremely conscientious worker, an excellent student. I'm very pleased with staff comments and i sincerely hope he will be able to retain this enthusiasm from his teachers so um yeah quite prophetic <laughs> comments there yeah from from your time at leeds okay well look, let's watch a little video is that if that's all right um yeah we've got something else coming up now this is the mike carr trio who you work with a yeah. lot a great yeah. organ player and um, is it harold uh the harold smith on the drums oh, drum. yeah. yeah he swings doesn't he yeah. Well, you all do. It's a great, yeah. great yeah, trio. Yeah. And you work together yeah, quite yeah. a lot, right? Yeah, I enjoy doing that. Yeah, yeah, sure. And you tour throughout Europe with that band as well, I know. And um, I know you. I, yeah. Yeah. Um, and and this is a this is another live performance on a, on another. This is a German TV show, and we think it's from Cologne. I think it was Cologne, Cologne. I'm not sure. Right, and we reckon it's around about the mid '90s. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, this tune is um, Hank Mobley tune, isn't it? This I dig of you by Hank Mobley, yeah. Fantastic. Okay, let's 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 watch a little bit of that, and then we'll come back and chat some more. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, that was the Mike Carr Trio, featuring my guest Dave Cliff on guitar. And uh, really, again, just fantastic swinging group. Um, we were just talking about that gig. I, I said it was a part of a tour, but that's not actually correct, is it? You was just telling me about how you got there. Yeah, it was it snowed all the way back. Uh, well, the treacherous journey. But uh, you drove all yeah. the way to all the way there for one gig. Is that right? Yeah, we were stayed in an hotel for the night. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, it's pretty hardcore. Yeah. And so on the, other, the, 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 the on other tracks, it's, it was mainly Irene Reed, the singer. It was her gig. Right. And we used to do a couple of instrumentals as a warm up. And that oh, was I this see. idea that was a trio feature. Oh right. So she was on the gig on that gig with you yeah, as well? Yeah, yeah. And that uh, and it was a German it was, team. It, was only, it was recorded in a club in Germany. In in Cologne. Fantastic. And um and you said you played at Ronnie's quite a bit with that that band as well. Yeah, I reach you came over every year, so for two or three years. And uh did other odd things. And and so playing at Ronnie's I mean, not it's not like now. Back then you used to do you do like a couple of weeks, wouldn't you, where it'd be every night. Yeah. Yeah, I remember we did a couple of weeks opposite Cedar Walton Quartet. Fantastic. And even gave it, even we got the bit because we had a woman in the band, I read. We got you got the posh one with the loo, the posh dressing room. <laughs> I see the Walton, see the Walton in his quartet were downstairs and in the crappy. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> so I bet mean, that was a great source of amusement. But so two weeks of playing like a few hours a night together, it's, it just does a lot for a band, for a group, doesn't it? Yeah, do, yeah, you can't replace that. Yeah, yeah. Fa fantastic. So, um, well, um, we've got we've got another sh another video here of um, of another a later gig with Bob Wilbur. Nothing, nothing too embarrassing, is it? <laughs> no, it's quite short actually this one but it does feature you again we've got a nice solo oh, it? it's the um the sax the soprano summit reunion oh, yeah, it's, band. It's, it's, yeah it was called summit reunion because they both weren't playing soprano so much they were playing clarinet bob and kenny so it became summit known as summit reunion right and this um, and what and, and so how did that whole thing come about then it was just like they well decided... i think when when we were touring um uh, Holland and stuff with Warren Marshall and Lee Connors. Bob Wilbur came came to the gig, right? And I got introduced to him. To him. And I think and uh, Peter Inn was doing the gig with Soprano Summit as well. So right. I think he recommended me, or Bob heard me playing with Connors and that. And uh, we did a couple of tours of uh, England with uh, Soprano Summit. And when and that was in the seventies, right? Yeah, about 70, 75, 70. 77, 78, yeah. Right. Long time ago. <laughs> and, um, but this, but what we're seeing now is not from then. This is from oh, much that, later. That well, 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 Bob would call me occasionally for things, you know, over the years. I mean, I didn't play, I didn't play with him loads, but there was, I kept up the connection there. So I did things off and on for years. And that particular thing in Ireland, he was using piano, guitar, bass, and drums, rhythm section. Dave Green on bass, Mick Pine piano, Bobby Worth drums. Great. Alvin McBorn and Bob and Kenny. And so was that a tour or was that just put together for this gig? It was or? a small tour um, at the Cork Festival. I mean, it was at the Cork Festival. Yeah, the festival. Was there. We did two or three nights. And this was and this went out on the Irish TV channel, yeah, didn't it? Yeah, the Irish channel, yeah, right. Fantastic. Okay, well, let's watch a bit of this. Um, and uh, so this is... Uh, Are you tuned as Rosetta, Rosetta? Rosetta. Tuned by Earl Hines, yeah. Fantastic. I think Brilliant. that's all us from that. Uh, here we go. Soprano Summit. And uh, here we go.
the show, I just want to take a moment to tell you about um, a new way that you can help support me do this. And that is through patreon.com. That's right, I've got a, an account now. So the link's below here, patreon.com Buster Birch. And if you go along to there, um, you can now make donations by Visa credit card. So you don't have to use PayPal if you don't want to do that. And the advantage of Patreon is that once you do it once, it will automatically deduct on a per show basis. So instead of having to fill in the forms every week, if you want to make a regular donation, then that will just automatically deduct straight to your credit card each per show. And that is hugely helpful to me because it means I know that I've got a certain amount coming in every time I do a show. And that really helps me uh, plan ahead and keeps the viable sustainability of the show going. There's two levels of sponsorship. There's my silver and gold membership. All of my patron supporters will get a big thank you personally from me live on the show and to the gold uh, member sponsors will get an additional uh, Spotify playlist which uh, will be sent to you each week it's something that I'm putting together it's personally curated by me and will feature lots more albums by the by the guest artists each week so it's a great opportunity to get to know this music much better if you're if you're really enjoying the show and you like the little uh, tasters that you're hearing that's a great way to get to know this music even more and enjoy uh, in full comfort the full sound of the full albums thanks very much back to the show that's right and i'm here live with my guest dave cliff and um yeah that was that was a fantastic uh, 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 a sh sh gig we saw there uh, live in um, in Cork was it the Cork Jazz Festival? Yeah, Cork Jazz Festival. Yeah, and mid nineties uh, again with a, with an all great yeah. all British um, rhythm section there. So yeah. we're going to move on to um, uh, uh, somebody that you've had a, a very long and uh, fruitful musical partnership with, uh, who was a guest on the show a few weeks ago, uh, Jeff Simpkins, who who's great mates of yours i know and um we've got a, we've got we've got uh some we're going to play something from from the album but i'm just wondering if you could perhaps you know tell us a bit about how you how you guys got together because i thought it was on summer school but apparently not no I mean, um jeff called me we'd never met but he called me to do a duo gig i was just playing in a wine bar for a drinks you know a reception thing you know you know these sort of things nobody's yeah. listening yeah yeah you just sit in the corner and play through a few tunes. So it was a recommend. He just got your number from somebody recommended yeah. you, right? That's right. And uh, and I liked his sound immediately. Something touched me, mm. and he's sort of quite unique. Mm, definitely. And uh, I'm not worked in various combinations: duos, trios, quartets, quintets. When when was this around about? Uh, it was about 1987 when I met Jeff. Right. But we did an album which only came out in vinyl. It was under my name, the Dave Cliff Quintet, called The Right Time. Oh, Jeff's on that, is he? I, I saw, yeah, yeah, I, I didn't realise. John Pierce, John Pierce on piano, Alec Down with bass, Mark Taylor drums. Yeah. That was my first uh, album under my own name. Right. And it came, came out pretty good, I thought. Very nice. And uh, then, yeah, and I got to, you know, I did the summer school for 30 years. So I saw Jeff every year then. <laughs> yeah, happy times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, um, so, and then we've got, but we've got a bit of Sipping at Bells, haven't we? That's a fantastic. I played a bit of that album on the show with, that Jeff was on. But, uh, but I've, I've, I can't remember what year, what, what year was that? Um, 95, 1995, does that yeah. Sound about right. I did a lot in the nineties. It was the peak of my career. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you must have got a big tax bill that year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> and um, yeah. so was that a good? So, so you kind of all worked together quite a bit off and on, and you know, but that with Mark yeah, Taylor, with, Simon Wolf as well. You did done quite a yeah, lot with, haven't you? I think Simon, yeah. And do you find that that's you know if. It, if 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 it's if if you're leading the band and it's being in bearing in mind these are sort of sessions under your your name, how did you find that kind of as an experience? It must be great comfort to have. Yeah, I felt a bit more that... pressure. I hardly slept the night before. Yeah, <laughs> but, but it went it went well. Funny enough, got by on adrenaline. <laughs> 
but having people that you work with a long time is obviously quite a comfort in that sort of scenario, isn't it? And you know, it is, yeah. Yeah, as Jeff said, it's all about trust. You yeah. trust that the other guy's going to do the right thing. Yeah. Trust and faith. Yeah. Yeah, I particularly enjoy playing with Jeff and Joe. He's on, you know, like some some sax players, they can't treat you like a bebop workhorse, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, here we go, it's 10 courses of the way I look tonight, the way you look tonight, you know. All right. It's more, it's more, it's, with him, it's more of an equal partnership and uh, he's listening all the time, you know. Yeah. Well, there's yeah. clearly a connection that you have, with yeah. you and Jeff have. And, I mean, you know, with all these musicians that you've worked with, they're all great players, but there's something about playing so much together over a long period of time, isn't there, where you... Where you can yeah, sure. go places, maybe that you wouldn't, you know, you can. It, it, do you, do you right. find? Do so you feel like you can explore? Yeah, it a you bit feel more. free to. You feel freer. Mm. Not so set in the routine. Hmm. And this album. So we're going to play a track from Sipping at Bells, and um, that's a that's a again a great. You got a great combo there with Mark Taylor on the drums and Simon Wolf on the bass. But you did a few duo tracks on that album yeah, as well, a, didn't you? Yeah, there's a funny, there's a funny story there. <laughs> I, I know that's why I've um, but, prompted um, it. Simon seemed to be. Simon turned up at the gig. I answered the door. Of the studio, the studio was in West London. Right. He was driven all the way from Catford or somewhere. And he said, "I've forgotten my bass." <laughs> right. So he, he, he looked slightly sheepish. Right, so this is and like your thought, session. I, I, was going to turn, I think he thought I was going to turn on him and sort of you know, abuse him or something. Right, well, you know. Because I had the idea of doing some duo tracks. If we didn't have enough quartet material, Jeff and I could come back to the studio the next day and do lay down a few duo tracks. Oh, So right. it, fell, it fell neatly into the plan. So basically yeah, he went home, go, did he? Go home and get your bass and then come back later. <laughs> So while he was going all the way back home to get his bass, you you laid down these tracks with Jeff, which was which was kind of part yeah. of the plan, but maybe not yeah, in that four order. Or five, four or five jewel tracks, yeah. Fantastic. Which I thought they might run well, actually. Oh, they're beautiful. It's, it's a fantastic album. And the, the, the engineer, the engineer um, Dick Hammett. Don't know if you know that that studio. Yeah. Probably, Red okay. Gables. Yeah, I've recorded there a few times. Yeah. So Simon came back. Obviously, Simon was running late. Obviously, and he came back. And he helped himself to some sausages in the fridge. <laughs> no, bananas. Bananas, you know, wasn't it? Yeah. Without asking, and Dick, Dick's a very fastidious guy. That's so right. when he sent me the bill for the recording, like recording and mixing, he put it at the bottom, Wolf's Bananas, two pound. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so you got an itemised bill, which included yeah. the bananas, as it's well lovely. as the mixing and recording. Fantastic. Well, it's not often that happens, is it? So it sounds like a rather fraught session, um, all in all. Yeah. <laughs> but it's come out beautifully. It, it, I mean, the, the, the album's absolutely marvellous. It was some wonderful playing on there. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty proud of that album. Not particularly, not particularly from my own playing particularly. I don't think I'm playing that great on it. But, but the overall thing, and it's a good variety of material. It's very eclectic. Yeah. You know, there's Western Gommy things. Yeah. The honest things. Miles Davis, a couple of tunes, and a few unusual standards. One of the things that Jeff mentioned, he said about doing these du duos with you, he said, of course, he's, he, well, he said, I think he said something like, well, of course, it's easy for me, but when Dave plays solo, when Dave solos, he's on his own. Because, like, and yeah. I just wondered if you had any thoughts about that. Is, is there something that switches? Do you, do you have. You know, obviously, you play differently when you're comping behind a soloist, but then when you play a solo, it, and you haven't got a rhythm section behind you, is that do you have to take a very different approach to that? Yeah, you've got to try and think of the pulse. You, you've got to try and make it clear for the audience what's happening. Otherwise, people might think you're just practicing or something. You know, <laughs> so you, I feel the pressure to be absolutely clear. And then it's also try and include chords, you know, give give some harmonic language to it, not right. just lines. Play, play uh, add chords to it, and keep them very very vary what you're doing. Like some tunes, I might just accompany with a bass line. Right. Some tunes I might do four the bar Freddie Green style. Some tunes I'm just open comping. 
Yeah. And then do a lot of duetting as well. That's nice. Just playing lines together. You mean two li- two lines yeah. on your set on yeah, your own? And the guitar line, yeah, no chords. Oh. And so very, 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 you must feel, feel much more to vary the the music so it doesn't get too tedious. Right. So it's a very it's a very conscious thing. I mean, I suppose that you're. When you... gigs, only, it took me a long time to develop my approach. Right. So I'm not I'm not virtuoso. Well, some people might argue differently. Well, I'm definitely not. But, uh, <laughs> so you've got to find other resources, you know. I think you once said, I think I've just something's just come back to me now that you, I think I heard you once say about there's something about like being when you're a rhythm section player. When when you solo, it was it was. I'm, I don't want to. I mean, I am paraphrasing you, but it was something along the lines of like, so half the time you're a communist and half the time you're a fascist or something like that. You said, was that right? No, it, was, I... it, was, it, was a, it was a quote from Red Red Mitchell, who Simon was a friend with, a great right. bass, Red Mitchell. He said, you 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 well, you've been a communist when you when you're accompanying. Yeah. The capitalist when you saw him. Oh, a capitalist, yeah. I thought the fascist yeah. bit wasn't quite right. So yeah, the ca- yeah, so the idea right. is that you're paying for the group. So as a rhythm section yeah. player, most of the time, yeah, you know. But when like, you're sorting, you're going, for your own, you're going for yourself. You're all out for yourself, right. Yeah, which is kind of a good way of putting it, isn't it? But when you're soloing on your own, then, of course, you've got to still be a bit of both, haven't you, I suppose? Yeah, you're a lonely capitalist. <laughs> Lonely capitalist. Very good. Okay, well, look, let's play a little bit of this. So, um, and, yeah. and um, the other thing, of course, and I, you know, I, I think this is a real feature of Jeff, uh, Jeff as well as much as yourself, and and all great artists. I mean, you know, it's it's it takes a lot of skill and years of dedication to be to play bebop and all the rest of it. But I, for me, I think when you hear someone play a ballad like that, that really you know, is is another level because that's when the whole the heart and soul and everything and it's gotta mean something, isn't it? You can't just be playing Yeah, sure. Yes, yeah. And I think Especially, it, it's not not so much of a technical thing, it's more of an emotional if you've got emotional maturity. Right. And to be able to speak to people in that way and and, and, and yeah. yeah, and I think the ballad yeah. is, is a is a great is a great uh, way of telling that. So um so we're going to hear this ballad now. This is um, How Deep Is The Ocean? And it's from Sipping At Bells, the album, which is from 1995. And this features um, you, yourself on guitar, and uh, Jeff Simpkins on the alto saxophone, a lovely duo. Here we go. <laughs> Thank you. 
absolutely wonderful and um that was my guest dave cliff on guitar with jeff simpkins on alto saxophone from the album sipping at bells highly highly recommended 1995 recording um and dave was just telling us about uh all the shenanigans that were going on while they were making this wonderful music great great um so um well, I thought we could look at talk perhaps a little bit about your teaching work, Dave, because I know that you've um, you've been involved a lot with education for many years. You've been professor of jazz guitar at a lot of the conservatoires, and Jeff Jeff mentioned something interesting when he, when he was talking about his like the whole a Tristano thing about Lenny Tristano being one of the first kind of proper jazz educator somebody that actually sat down and thought about it a lot and uh, yeah. had a whole philosophy about education yeah. and 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 part of that being that um that teaching is something that we should do or am i right am i if i, I don't know again i might miss, 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 miss i don't want to misquote jeff but he felt like it was a very important part of the whole process of being a musician is that something that resonates with you? Yeah, I think so. But I mean, some musicians might feel differently about some people who aren't interested in teaching. Hmm. I mean, well, I mean, a lot of the artist, artistic people are more self-obsessed. And... <laughs> I'm not saying the ones are bad or a good thing. Yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah, no, it's fair enough. Some people are not, not that interested in teaching. But I was thinking more about the Tristano model as part of... Being what well, you well, do. It's, it's all, I mean, I never met Lenny Sassano. I, I, I've got, got sort of second hand. Yeah. Peter End. The, the approach to that. They're taking songs out, using your ears. Right. It's, uh, avoiding me, me, mechanical playing. Right. Keep it fresh. You, you use your ears. I think Jeff said something along the lines of whenever he, when he starts playing, he wants his mind clear and that he'll just re- try and be very open to what's around him. Is that something that you you also... Yeah, well, you, the thing is, you've got to do your basic homework first. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Like, learn, I, mean, I know it sounds boring, but learn the melody properly and then go through all the chords and the scales. Get all the material, the more you get your material organised. Yeah. Then you can get to the stage where it's more intuitive, but you've got right. to do that work first. Yeah. Yeah, I guess there's no yeah, shortcuts. I mean, somebody, I mean, somebody Lawrence said you shouldn't be thinking when you're soloing. Hmm. Somebody said he was actually on a gig where Sonny Lawrence is walking around saying, "Don't think, don't think." To himself. Yeah. What? Yeah, what is? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 but you've got to think in the practice. Somebody said you think when you practice and you don't think when you're playing. Right. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if that's 100% true, but there's some truth in that. Yeah. I guess, uh, it, I guess I mean, like it's like being in the conscious state or the subconscious state, is it? Yeah. like? I mean, a lot of things we do unconsciously. I mean, just, I mean, you, you might be getting in, in and out of a car and you're, and you're talking to the wife or somebody. You're doing two <laughs> things at one thing. You're not thinking about what you're doing. You, you know, you know how to do it, but that's only because you've done it so many times. Yeah, already. Exactly. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So I'm a, I'm a great believer in for sorting out the basics. I mean, most how, good teachers. Yeah. yeah. And, and how have you found the students respond to that? Because if you're teaching at conservatoire level, presumably that some of them. Feel like they've already done well, that. Yeah, you, you get a mixed bag. Some people respond well. Some people don't respond so well. Mm. A, lot, a lot of people want to run before they can walk. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. Mm. Um, but sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't work. And if you found, how so do you no, find? I quite, I, quite, I quite enjoy teaching. You. you do enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I. I <laughs> I thought I thought you did. I got that impression. I mean, I have to say, you know, we've we've known each other quite a long time through working together at summer school, and um, and all the stu- all the uh, adult learners that we have on the course have always raved about your your teaching and your approach, and um, you know, there's a sort of says no nonsense 
efficiency to what you're doing but you always create a very nice atmosphere in the room and and make people feel good about themselves but give them very clear sort of instruction it's always you know we've always had very 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 good um feedback about mm-hmm. your your teaching and um you know i think it's good to share good practice about these things as well isn't it i think it's good that we we'll, and in that that's certainly an environment where where that is encouraged yeah. isn't it yeah Actually, I enjoy running a band. One to one's good, but uh, running a band is more fun. When you've got a student in a band, it's a workshop thing, you know. Yeah. Yeah, they're good. Rhythm, the proper rhythm section and a couple of front line players. And yeah. Trying, trying out different tunes and stuff. And... I think, because I think, because um, I mean, I do a certain amount myself, and I think when you're in that workshop scenario, I think what's interesting, and I, I think sometimes students don't quite always realise is is there's a certain amount of craft of being a musician and yeah. playing in a band and like knowing knowing your role and and all that sort of interaction yeah. and signals that we get you know and what what is the protocol of of certain yeah. musical situations that they may not yeah. have covered at, on a one to one because one to one lessons tend to be a bit more about their instrument. And, yes. the, and the notes and when you get them in that environment of being in a group there's this whole other stuff which they may not have um, ever dealt with and uh, I think that's really interesting isn't it yeah communicating and also listening to what the other people are doing as well as listening to yourself yeah the communist capitalist uh, balance <laughs> getting it right <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> fantastic yeah Oh, social social democrat. <laughs> liberal, liberal democrat liberal democrat piano player fantastic i think we've actually had a few mps on our course haven't we so uh, yeah, including some liberal no, no democrat Tories. No Tories. <laughs> i think there might have been one or two along the way <laughs> anyway moving swiftly on <laughs> yeah. um so um yeah well we've gonna we've we get the times racing round as it always does with this, and I've got another clip to play. We're going to play out on this uh, video. It's, it's a fairly long track, but it's um, it's 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 again, it's a it's a, a a kind of live gig that was recorded for a TV show, another German TV show, and this is with Georgie Fame when you were touring with him, oh. and and um, and the track is. Moon Dance and the band features um, a very young guy Barker on trumpet and is it Alan Skidmore on the sax? I think Alan Skidmore on tenor, yeah. Yeah, and so how did the, how did the Georgie Fame gig come around and how how well, was that? I, I think I was playing with Michael Ronnie's and he was on he was topping the bill, hmm. so I think he heard me there. And then he'd done a recording in, in Holland with some Dutch musicians, which attributed to Chet Baker. He took words of some of Chet Baker's songs. Oh, yeah. And so you needed a, I think you needed a guitar, one in the British band with guitar. So I started doing some of these Chet Kibiga tribute gigs. And then he started using me on just the regular band. He, he normally went out with his two sons. One of his, mm. his sons is a drummer, Tristan. Right. And the other son, whose name escapes me, is uh, plays guitar, sound engineer. Right. Uh, and uh, so I started doing regular things on and off. For a few years, you know, the nineties again. It was the nineties. <laughs> well, I was going to mention it, but I thought after what you said, that's when, yeah. I, was, well, that's when I was a working musician. <laughs> yeah. Well, it must. I mean, you were you were in. You certainly were in high demand. I mean, there's no doubt about that. It must have been a great great period of, um, you know, of t- of of playing yeah. time for you. Yeah, I've been quite lucky, really. Doing it well. I don't have much luck's got much to do with it. I mean, um, but uh, you certainly, you know, were very very busy and um, playing with lots of great bands and touring a lot. Um, and this tune, Moon Dance, is an interesting. It's a Van Morrison tune, isn't it? But um, I think yeah. it's a nice kind of arrangement. Were they were they good chums? I, I, I don't know if there's a connection there with Georgie. Well, Fame. Georgie Fame toured with um, did some tours with uh, Van Morrison. And he, Georgie Fame was his MD, you know. He right. All his... I thought there was some connection there, yeah. Yeah. And so was that with when you're working with Georgie Fame? Was it was it 
you're, you're doing sort of probably slightly bigger venues where you and then the average sort of little jazz jazz clubs touring in and around he tends to do more um, theaters and things am i right abroad. yeah yeah no, mainly it was just the old festival would turn up right. we did the stockholm jazz festival uh, you know, just turn up, play them one night, and come back the next, fly back the next day. Right. Two gigs like that. Right. And uh, the odd thing in Britain, no, not not many things. Yeah, it was mainly the convent. Right. Um, or one-off festival things, you know. And he worked a lot, didn't he? he? Was always he seemed to sort of yeah. keep going, didn't he? he? Wasn't somebody to sit back and. Yeah. I got the impression that he liked to do the gigs and be out playing rather than just making yeah, records. Good. That's right, yeah, yeah. He's a good performer. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, we've got this clip, and again, this is from a TV show. What, how did that, that was, or was it for the festival that they recorded and then put it on a show? Was yeah, it I for can't the... remember. It was in a, it wasn't in a studio. It was in a, no, it was a, it was like there a theatre or something. There was, a, there was an audience, yeah, there was an audience. Yeah. So that could have been a festival gig then, we think, maybe, a theatre, yes. isn't it? Yeah, a jazz festival. Fantastic. Okay. Um, well, uh, what we'll do is I think we'll play out on that. Um, but before we go, you know, I'd just like to say thanks for coming on again and sharing your time. If, if there's, any, there's anything else you wanted to add to any of that, Dave, then um, have you got anything you, we haven't – is there anything we've not covered that we should have covered, do you think? Um, you you had some questions. You said you might be some questions about the guitar I use. I don't know. We covered that, didn't we? Well, I think we mentioned it briefly, but um, of course, you know, maybe we should clarify a bit about your um your guitar. Yes, exactly. Because yeah, uh, sure. Well, 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 I was always in favour of acoustic electric, and I couldn't even get on with solid bodies. But then uh, a student of mine came to me, and he had a solid body guitar, and he had heavy strings on. Right. And, uh, that room, and, and, and it made it all the difference. Because I couldn't get a decent sound out of solid bodies. But then right. you usually should have very light strings. So it's okay. like elastic bands, you know. Right. And, why uh, is that? Is that so they can bend them more or something? Or is, that, is yeah, there some... Yeah, that's the other thing, yeah. For the, 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 bender, the benders, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and uh, whereas the jazz guitars tend to have a thicker... Yeah. Why? Okay. This is. Well, I, was, I, I was wandering around the music store and I saw this guitar going for 140 quid called a Fender Bullet. It was a new Fender they brought out, and sort of bargain basement Fender. Right. And I've still got it. It's a great guitar. And I started using more and more on gigs. Right. Is yeah. that the one you've still used all this time? Then the same guitar. Yeah, I've still got it. Yeah, yeah, still going. And fact, that... I liked it so much. I bought a Squire Squire you know, guitar company to do copies of other things, and there's a Squire bullet. Bullet. It's called a, a bullet. Yeah. That's, oh. Yeah. Oh, so you've got the copy and the original. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. see. Back up. People seem rather amused by the title. I mean, Mark Taylor would say, "You got the bullet tonight." <laughs> People seem amused by it. So the title, bullet. And and you and he, it just and of course we talked about being able to crank it up a bit more than when you're doing these louder gigs. So that would have been useful for this uh, Georgie Fame band then as That's well. That's right. Playing play with Mike, we used to be quite loud. Mike Carr yeah. with the trio, yeah. yeah, the organ. Yeah. Yeah, you need to get the guitar to cut through, and not have the feedback problem. Yeah. And is there something to do with the, are they closer together? Do you find it affects your technique? Do you have to, does it, can you pick one up and just pick the other one up or is it, is it take a bit of getting, settling in? A um, little bit, a little bit. Once you play for an hour or so, it's, it's okay. Fine, yeah, I'm sure yeah. well. Cool. Well, um, well, we'll, we'll, we'll play, we're going to, we're going to finish up on this um, video now. So, um, it just leaves me to say, um, thanks to everybody for, checking in and listening in it's it's wonderful to be doing these shows and thank you thank you to everybody who does make a donation it really does make a massive difference to us at the moment um so we really appreciate all that and everything is split between us 50 50 that's what we do with all your donations um and thank you to uh the patreon supporters as well um next week i've got um neil and sue richardson on a uh, very talented husband and wife 
uh, who um, Sue's a fantastic trumpet player and singer, and uh, Neil is also a, a fantastic singer and a piano player as well. A great piano player, and he runs a lot of gigs on the south coast. So that'll be interesting. Lot of lots of chat about there. Um, so thanks everybody for tuning in and uh, if you're checking us out on YouTube we do have a uh, mailing list then if you sign up for that you'll get the email one hour before the show with the, with the link to listen live. So once again thanks uh, to everyone. Thank you Dave. It's been great mate having you on. Pleasure. I've, Pleasure. I've, I've, boring, I've really not wasn't too boring. <laughs> not at all. No, it's always great to chat to you and um I always enjoy you know, I always learn something when I chat to you, and I, I, I always very much enjoyed our, 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 our long... you, learn, you learn not to call me again. <laughs> <laughs> I always enjoyed our journeys in the car. We used to go. We used to do the gigs. We'd always have quite a nice long chat in the car on the way there. And I would always find it absolutely fascinating and very interesting. So, yeah. um, so thanks for coming on and sharing your music. And folks, you know, do check out there's 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 lots of other stuff out there that you of, of Dave's and um I've got uh, the Spotify playlist is 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 for the Gold Patreon members. So there's there's some albums coming your way to check out. So thanks very much everyone. Take care and uh thanks Dave. Take care of yourself and uh, we're going to leave you with this um uh live video from uh, a German TV show. We think it's in a festival, in uh, featuring uh, my guest Dave Cliff with the Georgie Fame Band, and uh, this is Moon Dance. Thank you very much. Good night, everyone. See you next week. Bye, Dave. Bye, bye. <laughs> one, two, one, two, three, four. <laughs> Well, it's a marvelous night for a moon dance With the stars up above in your eyes A fantabulous night to make romance Neath the cover of October skies All the leaves on the trees, they are falling To the sound of the breezes that blow And I'm trying to please to the calling Of your heartstrings, they play soft and low And all the night Seems to whisper and hush All of the soft moonlight Seems to shine in your bush Can I just have a moment Dance with you, my love Can I just make some more Dance with you, my love I want to make love to you tonight I can't wait till the morning has come And I know now the timing is just right And straight into my arms you will run When you come my heart will be waiting To make sure that you're never alone There and then all my dreams will come true dear There and then I will make you my own And every time you just travel inside Then I know how much I want you That my love I can't hide Can I just have one more dance with you, my love? What I say Can I just make some more romance with you, my love? Saw me standing alone Without a dream in my heart Without the love of my own Blue moon You knew just what I was there for You heard me saying a prayer for Someone I really could care for And then it suddenly appeared before me the only one my arms could ever hold I heard somebody whisper, please adore me And when I look, you turn to gold Can I just have a moment dance with you, my love But I said, can I just make some more romance with you, Guy Barker
Guitar. It's a marvelous night for a moon dance with the stars up above in your eyes. A fantabulous night to make romance neath the cover of October skies. All the leaves on the trees that are falling to the sound of the breezes that blow. And I'm trying to please to the calling of your heartstrings they play soft and low. And all of the night's magic, she's a whisper and hush. All of the soft blue light seems to shine in your blush. Can I just have one more dance with you, my love? Jumping and the cotton is high, and I'm gone, little girl. Don't you know I'm gone? I'm gone, little girl. Don't you know I'm gone? I'm gone, little girl. Don't you know I'm gone? Thank you for Van Morrison, who's gone, who's gone. Who's gone, who's gone Yeah Can I 